So what is this thing called fermentation? Well, you might have heard it referred to as anaerobic respiration. What is it? How does it relate to living things? And what do we need to know about it in biology? Let's take a look. Fermentation is a type of cellular respiration. Cellular respiration, a reminder here, it's where energy rich organic molecules, usually this one here, glucose, are broken down to lower energy products to release energy. Now there's two major types of cellular respiration. There's aerobic respiration, which I've talked about in a previous video, check that one out. And the other type, of course, is fermentation, which is what we're gonna be looking at in this video. Another name that you might hear fermentation referred to as is anaerobic respiration. Quite simply, the difference between the two is aerobic respiration uses oxygen, and that's why I've underlined the term aero, because I always think air has lots of oxygen, so aerobic respiration is the one that uses oxygen to break the glucose down. Whereas fermentation is anaerobic respiration. In anaerobic respiration, we're breaking down glucose without oxygen. That's the difference between the two. So fermentation or anaerobic respiration is the type of cellular respiration where we're breaking down glucose with no oxygen. It's actually far less efficient than aerobic respiration, the version of this process where oxygen is available. And so fermentation only occurs when oxygen levels are depleted because it's not as efficient a process at releasing energy as aerobic respiration. The other difference is that whilst aerobic respiration, the latter stages occur in the mitochondria of eukaryotic cells, in anaerobic respiration or fermentation, this process just occurs in the cytoplasm of eukaryotic cells. Let's take a closer look at the processes involved and how it actually works. There's actually two different types of fermentation processes. One of the processes we see in plants and yeast, plants we're familiar with, Yeast are an interesting type of organism. Yeast are you commonly heard of because they're used in bread making or beer making. Um, yeast are a eukaryotic, unicellular organism, but they use the same type of fermentation process as plants. The other type of fermentation process, of course, occurs in animals. So we're going to have to look at the two different processes and look at the summary equations for how they work. First of all, let's take a look at the equation for plants and yeast. Well, of course, we're starting with a reactant of glucose and we can add glucose down here for animals as well because it's cellular respiration. Glucose is what we're breaking down. It's a high energy organic molecule that we're gonna break down to release energy. Now we're breaking it down without any oxygen. So there's no other reactant. It's just glucose being broken down for plants and yeast and for animals. This is where it gets a bit different. The differences between the two is in what gets produced as a result of this process. In plants and yeast, we break down glucose to produce this molecule, C2H5OH. This is ethanol. So glucose is broken down to produce ethanol. And the other product is carbon dioxide. Two molecules of carbon dioxide, two CO2. And of course, the very important thing that we can't leave out of course we are releasing energy. Just a reminder that respiration processes are exothermic, which means they release or give off energy, and that's the purpose of these processes. Unlike photosynthesis creating glucose, which was endothermic and required energy to occur, respiration processes are exothermic. 
So that's a summary of the equation for plants and yeast. Glucose breaks down to ethanol and carbon dioxide and releases energy. Now, ethanol, more commonly known as alcohol. Now, this type of fermentation is not the process for animals, which is a good thing because picture yourself going out for a run your cells are using aerobic respiration, it's all going well, until you've been going for quite some time and the oxygen levels in your body start to get a bit lower. So your body starts to use fermentation. Now, if your body was to use this type of fermentation and produce alcohol, that could be quite dangerous. The blood alcohol level could rise in your body and while that may sound like a good thing, I can assure you it would not be a good thing. It could be really dangerous. So instead of this fermentation, animals have a different type. What animals produce is this molecule here, which is called lactic acid. So glucose, C6H12O6, is broken down to form two molecules of C3H6O3, lactic acid. And of course we can't leave out, energy is released because after all that's the purpose of the reaction. And that is the process in animals. Lactic acid is produced, it's not as hazardous as ethanol or alcohol would be, but I'm sure you've heard of lactic acid and you would associate it with feeling tired after exercise. Lactic acid contributes to muscle fatigue. So there are two types of fermentation. We've got other names for them. In plants and yeast, we call it alcohol fermentation because of the production of ethanol. And in animals, we call it lactic acid fermentation because of the production of lactic acid. In both cases, energy is released because they're exothermic, but they're far less efficient than aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration releases a lot more energy than the fermentation processes. These will only occur when there's no oxygen present in which to break the glucose down with. And the last little bit to remember is that this energy is not then straight away used for the cells to carry out their work. Let's just clear these equations out the way and have a look at where this energy is used. So the energy released by fermentation processes is used to fuel the ATP cycle. Here's the ATP cycle here. Here we have energy from respiration, which keeps the ATP cycle going. ATP is an energy storage molecule in cells. The breakdown of ATP releases energy to be used by the cell. So respiration is fueling the ATP cycle and the energy given off from the breakdown of ATP is what is used by the cells to carry out their work. If you'd like to learn more about the ATP cycle, check out the video, what is the ATP cycle? So hopefully that's helped you to understand the two different types of fermentation processes that exist. Finally, I'm going to finish with this summary table of the major differences between aerobic respiration and fermentation. First of all, the site in eukaryotic cells, aerobic respiration occurs in the cytoplasm and the mitochondria, whereas fermentation just occurs in the cytoplasm. The reactants, in aerobic respiration, we start with glucose and oxygen, whereas in fermentation, we only have glucose. No oxygen is available to help break glucose down. The products of aerobic respiration are carbon dioxide and water. The products of fermentation are lactic acid in animals and ethanol and carbon dioxide in plants and yeasts. The ATPs per glucose molecule, this just simply shows you how much more efficient aerobic respiration is than fermentation. 
the amount of energy released by aerobic respiration is enough to generate 36 molecules of ATP, which is great. The amount of energy released in fermentation is only enough to generate two molecules of ATP, which is better than nothing, but it's far less efficient. So there you have it, a summary of aerobic respiration and fermentation. I hope this video has helped with your understanding. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time. In all of my videos, I use information and material from the Biology Levels of Life textbook, workbook and teaching notes. If you want any information on how to get hold of these, just leave a comment below or email me on jeremy.s.lacornu at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe if you want regular updates on my new videos. And as always, thanks so much for your support and positive feedback. I'm really glad that my videos are helping you.